Yo, Chuck. Hey guys, back with another video on object-oriented programming in JavaScript, more specifically the four pillars of object-oriented programming. So before we dive in to the four pillars, I think it's kind of worth mentioning the differences between like a functional programming language and an object-oriented one. So a functional programming language, as you might imagine, it's based around like functions and variables and the data is immutable, which means you can't change the data. And then we use recursion for iteration in those languages. This is in contrast to object-oriented languages where you have classes of objects. Those objects are gonna have properties and methods and methods are just functions that are properties on an object. This data will be mutable and we're gonna use loops for iteration on this data. So the four pillars are encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and polymorphism. And we'll start with encapsulation. So encapsulation is just kind of like the idea of bundling data into properties and methods. So we have a class of car in this example, and we're going to give it a model, a make, and a year. And then we're also going to give it methods of honk and burnout. So we can make a new car by calling the new car keyword and then passing in the respective parameters that we've designated up here. And this is kind of cool because it cleans up your code and it kind of isolates it from interacting with like the global scope. Um, if you were to use a functional programming language, you might have functions that return some value or have some variable and they might change that variable and then that could break some other function and then your code is kind of just bleeding through. Whereas with this encapsulation idea of objects, you, they're just kind of like little capsules of data that um, we can easily manipulate and it won't bleed through into the global scope as easily, right? So moving on, inheritance. So inheritance is the idea of you've got an object you created and now you want to create a new object with those same properties from the, the parent, but maybe you want to add some additional ones, okay? So with this example, we've got a class of person. It has properties of age, name, occupation, and then we're going to create a class called female using the extends keyword as well as the super keyword. And super is really just a method that refers to like the parent class and it allows us to get those properties and methods from the parent class. So don't get too caught up on this, but notice that we want the same properties from the person class in our female class, right? But now we're gonna add something different. We're gonna say this.sex equals female. So when we make a new variable and we use the new female class, we're gonna pass in some data, just like we would in the person class, but this time, we're gonna have all those properties, but this new property that we created of uh, this.sex equals female. So that's kind of the advantage of inheritance. It saves a lot of redundancy in writing code, and it's very advantageous in that way to clean up your code. Moving on to abstraction. So abstraction is the idea of, let's hide data that's not relevant, that we don't need the programmer to know. This also stops code from leaking into the global scope and you're kind of like naming your objects uh, relative to what your object performs, right? So back to this car example, we've got a car with the model making year, and now we're gonna use inheritance to make a truck class. So just the same as before in the previous example with uh, person and female, except this time, notice that we are, we have this line of code up top it says if this dot constructor equals car throw new air cannot create a car so we've got the the truck example here and when we call it we're saying new truck and that's acceptable because we're not making another car class we're just making a truck which yes it is taking the properties and methods of car but it is not the same now let me show you an example if we were to use the new car keyword now it's going to throw an error because we're not allowed to create a new car because this class 
is using abstraction. So again, abstraction is just hiding data that's not relevant to the programmer, and it stops that code from leaking into the global scope. Okay, finally, moving on to polymorphism. Polymorphism is basically inheritance, but we're changing a property or method to override its behavior to something we want it to do differently than the, the initial parent class. So to give you an example, I've got a class of riflemen, has properties of name and age, and then a method called fire. And fire is just gonna shoot a musket, and it's gonna say bang bang shooting musket. Now we have a class of archer, which is gonna extend riflemen, so it's gonna steal those properties and methods, but a, an archer does not shoot a musket, they shoot arrows. So here I am uh, creating an archer variable called archer dude. It's going to be named Robin Hood, age 30, but I need to change the fire method to something that would make sense for an archer. So I'm going to use polymorphism and I'm going to morph or override the behavior of one of my methods and change it to swoosh shooting my arrows. And then you can see when I call dot fire on my archer dude it says swoosh shooting my arrows so that is pretty much what polymorphism is all about is just manipulating properties or methods to a new behavior that you want to like override it to do so something different so just a quick recap encapsulation is bundling data properties and methods like we saw before inheritance is when you don't derive one class from another Abstraction, hiding data that's not relevant to the programmer that you don't want them to see, that you don't want to bleed into that global scope. And then finally, polymorphism is overriding a shared behavior like we saw with the archer and the rifleman example, and then changing that behavior to something you want it to do differently than the parent class. So that was a quick recap, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.